Hi. I came up many years ago with a proof that there is something wrong with Pythagoras' theorem. I asked my teachers, professors in college and grad school, and all the people I knew but if there was anything wrong with my approach, but couldn't get any real flow from anyone. I recently tried the internet and found web pages that had hundreds of, of proofs, literally hundreds, because almost every great mathematician in history came up with a different one. I will start with uh, the one that I think is the easiest, and, um, and then I will explain how Pythagoras' theorem doesn't make sense. And I hope that one of the viewers will will answer my, my question and show me if there's anything wrong that I'm making. It probably that when things come to infinity, uh, weird things happen. Now the proof I chose for Pythagoras theorem is just to um, have a random right angle triangle and I'll call it sides A, B, and C. And I'll make four copies of this triangle and uh, put them in the arrangement shown to form um, as will be shown, a um, larger square of sides A plus B. And by doing so, we're making a um, smaller inner square of sides C. And using geometry and, and elementary theorems, we can prove that the inner uh, uh, object is, is actually a square with right angles with sides C. Now, using the areas, the relationship between the areas, um, the area of the outer larger square with sides A plus B is equal to the sum of the areas. Uh, one is the area of the inner square with side C, and the other is the sum of the areas of the four triangles of sides A, B, C, the original triangle that we started with. Now we can write these in formulas and algebraic quantities. Uh, the area of the larger ones, A plus B squared, the inner one C squared, and the area of each triangle is half A, B. Simplifying um, this last equation, um, there will be a term that can be cancelled, which is 2AB. And then we come up with the famous Pythagoras formula, and I totally agree with that proof. Let's say I'm standing at A here, and I want to get to B, and the distances are one mile to the east and then uh, another mile to the north. So I can, uh, obviously, if I want to move that in that path, um, the total distance will be tw twice one mile, which is two miles. Now, if I decide to make more turns and move um, um, from, the, this is the same points A and B, which are one mile east and one mile north, yeah, I'm decided here to uh, make more turns and move a half a mile to the east, then a half to the north, then another half to the east, and then last half a mile to the north. I'm following a different path here. The total distance here is, um, because it's composed of four smaller segments, is four times half a mile, and that's, that will be equal to two miles again. In this case, I decided to make even more turns, um, making eight smaller segments of one quarter a mile each. Total distance in this case will be eight times a quarter, which is still two miles. In this case, I made 16 uh, one eighth of a mile each, I mean smaller segments. And by doing so, I'm getting closer and closer to uh, what is called the hypotenuse. And I can keep dividing the distances or the smaller segments forever, or as mathematicians call infinity. And by, by getting to infinity, I will uh, make the exact hypotenuse according to Pythagoras' theorem. But the problem here is that if we calculate distance in this case, and the following cases, total distance in this case is 16 times uh, 1 eighth of a mile, which is still 2 miles. This time I made a very extreme case. Uh, it's 1 16th of a mile, 32 little segments, and the total distance is as usual. Um, just trying to make it clear, and this time it's 32 1 16th, which is still two miles. 
So, according to our repetitive division of the, of the segments, trying to get to the hypotenuse, it's always two miles. We always get two miles. Well, according to Pythagoras' theorem, it's the square root of two, which is almost 1.4. So, it's shorter. And my question is, where did the 0.6 go? And that's the question. Thank you.